So first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Fear. I'm here to tell you, no, actually I'm here to show you, there's no need to fear anything in Leathercraft. We're going to make it easy. Now, what are we doing here? Why do I have three different hides? I'm going to make a wallet, the Teddy, and it has three different leathers in it, and for a reason. I'll explain all of that as we move forward. I'll also tell you why out of the 60 or 70 different wallet designs I have, this is the one that I use and carry every day. But first, I'll break down how I'm going to make this easy for you by telling you and showing you throughout all of the steps to get from rolled hides to a perfect wallet. What are the steps you're asking? Again, easy. I'm going to show you how to make extra pattern pieces using the bump jigs, pattern layout, leather prep, pieces cut out with the clicker press, pieces cut out with the bump jigs. Uh, I'm going to show you a new little trick with ink stamps, edge beveling, edge dyeing, edge burnishing, how to make a mistake and how to fix it, glue prep, roughing, gluing, stitch hole marking, stitch hole punching, hand stitching, corner clipping, edge sanding, outside edges, presentation, and celebration. So sit back and enjoy the ride. Okay, some card magic. Wait. Oop, wrong video. All right, we're doing leather magic here, not card magic. Well, just in case, this is your card. Remember your card. As usual, we're gonna start with patterns. The main body and the bill pouch. These two will be horse doubling. Then for our pockets, these two will be black doubling. And these two will be English tan cow doubling. Six pieces, three leathers. And again, there's a reason for that. But let's just say you only had one of these. For some reason you lost it and you wanna make another one. Let me show you a quick, easy way to duplicate that piece or that piece or that piece. Just grab any box, cereal box, cracker box, anything, a box. All right. Pretend this piece got lost. You only got one, but you need two. Grab a ruler, make a straight edge. Get a bump jig, get a square, make a square. Bump jig, the piece you have. And there you have it. You could duplicate that piece right there in less than 45 seconds using the bump jigs and the rulers. And if you wanna get this curve in here, just grab a corner jig, put those in your corner, transfer that arc in less than 55 seconds. Now we need these paper pieces to turn into leather pieces. So let's do some pattern. Pattern weights. There's a link in the description for these. Now let's prep the back of these. And I use the white mud and I have a whole video on questions and answers and I explain this, this, this. Tokonoli. You get the idea, right? Mm. 
Now, let them dry. Now we cut all this out. I'm gonna show you some by hand and some with the clicker press. The ones by hand are exactly like we did a little while ago with the pattern pieces and the bump jigs. So strap in. I'm gonna do the length after I get it all together and folded, and then I'll measure it after it's folded. Mark your straight corners. Now the height on this one, I would measure with the bump jigs using these because those are the actual wallet heights. And I can hear you now, you're saying, wait, those are easy, they're square. What about these? Well, let's do some curves. Just use a scratch all to mark it. All right, for these three, let's use a clicker press. Any good size scraps, save them. While we're over here by the clicker press, I'm gonna use that press to stamp this stamp in to this piece here. I'm also gonna ink it with black archival ink. So let me re-ink this pad. I'm gonna come back. We're gonna put some ink on here and do some stamping. Okay, so, and to position this on here, once that ink is on there, you've gotta be perfect. So these bump jigs, it could be either one, aluminum, brass, put that on there like so. Once you're in the press, put that in the corner, put that in the corner like so, get that inked up, put that in there, and then set it down. This will guide your stamp down flat straight without shifting and messing and smearing that ink around. Press it and you're done. Let's go do it for real. Here we go. Load it up. See? Just let that bump jig guide that for you. You don't have to do anything. That's not too bad. I'll take it. Alright, we're looking good. We're getting there. And 
I number all of these wallets, so we're on number five. Remember our main body that we were gonna make the same height as these pockets? Well, now we can do it because we've got these pockets. Just use your bump jig. You got your little automatic corners. Self-measuring. Now we can get these edges all done for the pockets. Beveled, dyed. I use Berry King for a single layer of five ounce. I'll use size zero. Now let's dye some edges. I don't dye the black that's all the way black front and back. It's all the way through. That'll burnish up black without any dye. For these, Phoebe's chocolate is usually what I use and it's a lot darker than what that color looks like. This is a watercolor refillable pen off of Amazon. For the one layer dyeing, I use this pen. For the multiple layers, I'll use a dauber. Now we get to burnish these edges, white mud. Canvas. Just be patient. How about that? This is almost like magic, huh? It can be easy. So what happens when a magician makes a mistake? We own up to it, right? We forgot about this curve right here in this pocket. So let's just cut that curve out, redo the edges like we did before. I won't show you that, obviously I've already showed you. But these arc jigs, these will do perfect. Like I said, just redo those edges like before and we're back in business. All right, we're back in business. A little, uh, about two minutes setback. All right, we need these two glued to those two. With the bump jig, it's easy. And the Mascon ZB rougher, easy. And of course, do the same to these two. We'll clip this corner off later. I also know the back of this is gonna be glued down. So before I glue this on there, it's just a lot easier to rough this back up here. So here's where we are. Roughed up, roughed up, roughed up. Let's glue. And if you like what you're seeing, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Remember we cut this out by hand so it doesn't have the curve. Let me show you real quick how to cut that. Just use this piece as your guide. Take a sharp knife and just make a bunch of tiny little clips. Let's see, we are, we just did that one. Now we just need the pockets on the main body. Same as before, mark up with the bump jigs, rough them and glue. Are we rolling or are we rolling? I told you that I was going to explain why this is the one wallet that I choose to carry out of all of my designs and it is simply because of the design and these inside pockets, these 
slip pockets. They're perfect for sliding the card in and out quick when you're at the store. And the overall size is perfect for any pocket. Now we need the bill pouch on the back and a little design tip for you. Remember we left this long, we'll get to that in a second. The height of this pocket and the height of this are exactly the same. So that way when you stitch, that stitch that rolls over this will roll over that. It'd be one stitch there. Little tip for when you're designing. Now, and you can see, remember we cut this long, now we need to clip this end. So that's where we are. Now just roll this over and mark it. And with the bump jig and the square, just cut it. Next up is this arc. So I just need to see which one of these I used when I was designing this one for the arc jigs and just transfer that arc over there. I think it was this one. Yep, perfect. Okay, well the cameraman must have taken a break while I was cutting that, so we're gonna have to move forward. Sorry about that. Make those pretty too. Before we slap this on the back, remember we gotta bevel, dye, and burnish this. Now for this thin horse leather, I'm using a double zero berry king. Now let's get into why did I use cow and horse? and two different leathers. This, I wanted this stamp to push in a lot more. So that's the cow and it is at, right at five ounce. The horse Dublin is right at three ounce. So that's three, that's three. So it just keeps it a little bit thinner. That's five, that's five. Next, let's just put this on the back of there. Mark where your roughing will go. Remember, we're going to the top of here. And we're going to stitch to here and here out both ways. Now for this one, it's going here from the bump jig over to this pocket right here. So just mark it and then do the same thing on this side. So when you're done, you've got the back of the wallet, these roughed up, that is roughed up. Now we glue. I would glue one side first, then glue the up. Here's an idea. Let's just shut up and glue. Now just do one side at a time, binder clip them, and you're good to go. Now you're gonna have this bubble, which is exactly what you want. Now just clip these four corners, just like I showed earlier. When I sand, I like to sand in one direction only. So just keep spinning this way. If you go backwards, it tends to pick up the fibers and makes it a little bit rougher. Now the easiest part is marking for your stitches. I usually do four and a half to five millimeters from the edge. So. 
Real quick, Barry King Malls. This one is one pound, about four pounds, and about six pounds. I don't use this too often, except for when I do a lot of the long runs with the big stitch, you know, these things. 99% of the time, I'm gonna use the one pound. Occasionally, I'll go with this one. One pound is perfectly fine. Remember that one hole that goes over that pocket and that pocket works out perfect. Bone folder, handmade. Let's stitch. And I've got a whole video on hand stitching. All the details, all the specifics. I'll put a link down in the description. There's no need to sit here and watch me do this for 30 minutes. Look how close we are. Look, just edges and then we're done. And as I mentioned before, for the thicker leather, I'll go ahead and use a dauber. And we all know what's next, pretty edges. Like that. Now just do the rest. Well, there you have it. Just like magic. Keep on rolling and go have fun. <laughs>